Would you like to rewatch Bishop's messages each week and keep up with what's going on here at City Church? If so, head over to our YouTube channel to see the latest sermon series, short stories, City Church TV episodes, and so much more. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today by searching City Church of New Orleans. Well, welcome to City Church TV. And again, we are so thankful that you took the time to join us. I believe it's going to be for your benefit. Some of the subject matters that we're going to cover on this program are so necessary at this specific time. You know, all of us are locked in and quarantined and in our home, this lockdown, and we're not able to carry on our daily routine as we have. And it's caused us to make a shift, change. And sometimes that's not so easily done. I know for me personally, as I have sought the Lord, and what I found that he's speaking something to us. Of course, he's always speaking. But there's something now about being able to be alone more that he begins to speak more specifically. There's no doubt the church is in a I really believe a, a metamorphosis. There's a change going on within the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just, I'm not just talking about city church, the, the church I pastor. I'm talking about the church in America, the church universally. He's bringing us back. I really believe that. He's bringing us back to the basics. Exactly what I see happening in the life of uh, Moses when he was offered the entire country, the new land, a promised land. Mm -hmm. and, and Moses said to God, listen, all of that's good. I've had the riches of Egypt. I've, I've lived in the great palace. And I know, Lord God, where you're taking me is even greater. But if your presence, mm -hmm. if you, not just your glory, not just your goodness, what you can do for us, but you, if you don't go along with me, I don't want it. What a cry. And I hear that. I, I believe that that's where God is bringing us as individuals, as a local church, as the church, leaving the mechanics of religion and getting back to the basics of a one-on-one, face-to-face -on -one, -face relationship. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. So gather around the TV tonight. Bring everybody in. Let's talk about something I just believe that is life-changing. You know, it's so easy for me to talk about something when it's happening to me. Now, not every sermon that I preach on a Sunday or any time is, is something that I'm personally going through. It's something that the Holy Spirit will drop into my heart, and I will speak on that because I believe it's something that the church corporately needs to hear. However, the last few weeks in regards to the subject that we're gonna to discuss tonight, it's been something that I have been on on a personal journey. So therefore, it's not just me preaching at you, it's really me testifying and talking about what's going on within me. Again, my wife's here, Pastor Harvey, Leslie, and it just seems that our conversation as we started tonight, uh, you, you, know, you were saying that you were moved too by the word that is so it's so pertinent. It's so um, evident that this is yes. the word of the Lord for today. You know, a lot of people are closed in. They're locked up in their home, and they're not able to go about their daily routine, their, their normal routine. They look at the news, and they hear COVID-19. How important it is for us, Leslie, to live closer to the Lord now yeah. than ever. How important is that? Well, I, I'm really enjoying this series that you're preaching on God's presence and the secret place because I, in this time, have just taken moments just to be quiet before the Lord and really just to cry out for His presence. And you used a great analogy on Sunday and you talked about a fish being in water and how vital that water is for the fish. And if you take the fish out of the, uh, the water, the fish will die. Yeah. You know, you take him out of that vital environment. And for me, I believe as a, as a believer of Christ that it's vital 
that we have God's presence in our lives. And when we went home on Sunday, I went to Exodus uh, 33 that mm -hmm. you were talking about, and I focused on verses 14 through to 17. And I just allowed the Lord to speak to me on each verse because it really was just honed in on God's presence. And verse 14, it's, it's a conversation Moses is having with yeah, God. God. And verse 14, where God says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Hmm. And I looked at the other word for rest and I realized that rest means support. Hmm. And, I, and for me, God's presence in my life gives me support because I know everybody's thinking, what's going to happen when COVID-19 is over? How are we going to adjust back into society? There's still going to be that apprehension of the virus and is this person too close to me? Should I be wearing a mask? All these uncertainties. And I just think that if we can consciously daily walk in the presence of God, knowing how yeah. vital that is, we know that he's going to support us. So for me, his presence gives me support. No matter what I'm going to face, right. that word rest g gives me the assurance I'm not As alone. As you're saying that, you know, almost every person you run into anywhere, whether it's churchgoers, non-churchgoers, the common thing you'll hear from people is, I am exhausted. The, the world, everybody is exhausted. And I mean, yes, we have to go to work. We have things we have to do. You come home, you have duties. If you have children, they have home. There's just, it's like a never ending story to our daily routines. But could it be perhaps what you're saying about the rest means support? Could it be perhaps that I don't think we're able to stay home and just rest all day long. We have to make a living. We have to be productive. We have to do these things. But is it perhaps because we're doing a lot of what we're doing without God's presence right. with us? We're doing it on our own, not with the support that we really need. Because with his support, you know, it's like amazing when the grace of God is on your life. I remember when we rebuilt the church after Katrina and how exhausting we physically did a lot of the rebuilding. And as soon as we finished our first church of rebuilding, then we moved to our existing property and we literally rebuilt everything here. And when I look back on that physically, it was almost impossible to physically do what we did. I mean, there's so many miracles in that whole story, but physically, I can't, I can't imagine. I was telling the guys yesterday we were working and I said, um, you know, we women were like building scaffolding. We were like painting, we were tearing scaffolding. Physically, that was merely impossible. I don't think I can do that right now, but with the grace of God and that support that you're talking about, right. that help when he's with you. When he's with you, it's just amazing how, how you have the grace and you have the strength and you, you re, your joy remains right. and, and you enjoy life and you enjoy right. what you're doing. It's so important because, as you said, the environment was created before the product. Right. Before God created man, he created the earth, the vegetation, everything that we would need to be sustained, the fish, the rivers were created before the lake, I mean, uh, before the fish, the, the, the rivers, the lakes, mm -hmm. uh, because God understood that without this, it doesn't matter what I create. If it doesn't have a place to go to to sustain it, then that being, that product, whatever it may be, will never, will never live in longevity. That's where a lot of believers try to maintain, try to maintain the life of God without remaining in their environment, right. yes. remaining in their atmosphere that God created for us and did definitely bring it closer to us through the cross and through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, that great, that great space between man and God was brought back hmm. through the cross. And I, we have something to go to. I think with when you look at the conversation Moses is having with God, I think that really was a revelation he had. Yeah. Because God says, my presence will go with you. I will give you rest. And then Moses says to God, uh, well, if your presence doesn't go with me, <laughs> I'm not going. And I actually, I, I shared with Harvey the translation I read in the Message Bible. And it says, 
Moses saying to God, if your presence doesn't take the lead here, call this trip off right now. Wow. And That's you know, what I'm honestly, about. I know when we've done missions trips, um, when we've been praying uh, before leaving home, so many times we've said, God, if you are not in this, hmm. this trip's not happening. And I think the, the revelation that Moses had, that he knew that if God is going to go with him, if his presence mm -hmm. is going to be there, that it's going to be successful. Yes. And who doesn't want success in life? Whatever you're doing, whether it be your business, yeah. whether it be a missions trip, whether it be um, a family, whatever it is, you want it to be successful. And the bottom line for us as Christians, the way we enjoy the success is by living in the presence of God. We cannot do without it. Harvey's favorite scripture is in Acts 17, 28, yeah, where it says, in that. him I live, I, I move, and I have my being. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I feel sad for people who think they can do it without God. Yeah. Right. Because I did live a life without God. And I can tell you the life I lived then and the life I live now is complete polar opposites. Yes. Just in how I feel within myself. Mm -hmm. Knowing God's presence is there, that I'm dwelling in that knows whatever I put my hand to is going to be successful, that he's going to support me in everything that he's called me to do. This is one of my favorite subjects. Yes. But just a few weeks ago, my daughter, who's expecting her first, uh, first child, our first grandchild, uh, sat down at the piano with no one around, her and her uh, husband, and sang a song. And it was a song at my request, um, In His Presence. And... Uh, I think she did a great job, and I'd like to and share that with you because there's so much for us to talk about. If you're fearful today, if you're concerned, and all of us are about what's happening around us, where to from here? Moses was not as concerned. He understood if God was with him, no matter what he faced, he would have his support, his rest. And I think we can put our solace, we can put our, our, our same uh, faith in that opportunity as Moses. We can live in his presence and walk through, not around, not away, but through COVID-19, whatever you're going through, with him right there by our side, facing every trial and every crisis. So let's take a moment, let them bless us, and on the other side of this beautiful song, we're going to continue talking about God's presence in the midst of COVID-19. Cause we 
Moses said, without your presence, I don't want to go into that new land. Mm-hmm. He even said to God, listen, what separates us from other nations, God? If you don't go with us, we're just like all the other people. Hey, it's the same today as it was then. What separates God's people from others? Not that we're better, not, certainly not because we're more perfect. Right. No, the church has a lot of imperfections. But what separates and makes the church unique is not our many talents, not our many giftings, but because he yeah. is with us in all of the things. And if we need him more than ever, it's now. Yeah. We need him, not just his goodness, not just his divine grace, because it's always being poured out. Sometimes we are, we are blessed and favored, and we're not even aware of it because it's just how good our God is. Yes. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about that intimate relationship where God shares his secrets with his friends and there is an ongoing relationship. God's presence and what, what you have said and you guys have talked about this even while we're on that little break, God's presence does guarantee success. So it's not like that we have to substitute for one for the other, or we can't have his favor, his goodness without him. They both go together. But there is like one A and one B, him first, and then his goodness. Talk about that a little bit, about how how, uh, God's presence guarantees success. Well, what I believe, and I know we all do believe this, that, that we have a purpose in God, but that purpose can only be fulfilled in his presence. But yet there is a strategic effort by the devil to distance us from the presence of God. And I think what's important for viewers to realize tonight that this presence that we're talking about, it's not a mystical or mysterious or unattainable presence. The day we saw the light and we said, Jesus, come into my life, be the Lord of my life, forgive me for my sins, we became Christians. From that moment onwards, the joy that we've encountered in learning how to walk in His presence, how to live in His presence, and how to realize the success you're talking about is really the fulfilling of the purpose of God in our lives. And to realize that it, that it isn't mystical. It's not based on us, well, we must pray five or six hours a day. We must fast a certain number of days a month. There's nothing religious about the relationship with God. Here he is just saying, I will come and live in your heart by the presence of my Holy Spirit. And the more we press into him, the more we understand his word. But having said that, to always realize that the devil does have an attack against the purpose of God in our lives. There is a strategic effort. And really, all it is, is a strategy of distraction. It doesn't have to be some Katrina event. It doesn't have to be a COVID-19. It doesn't have to be a dump truck hitting you. It has to Hmm. be just getting you a little bit away from the presence of God. Just one inch at a time, distancing us by becoming so busy we lose focus on God by whatever it might be. Things we love can distract us, our family, other people's circumstances, uh, stresses and strains that people are going through, COVID-19 that we're in right now, that suddenly we shift our focus from him to whatever else it might be. It might be a good thing. This is a real problem. I need to solve it. But suddenly we're trying to fix it without the presence of God. So I think it's important for people to realize it's not mystical. It's not unattainable. It's attainable. And it's available right now for anybody who wants it just by simply surrendering ourselves to him and then learning to walk in that presence and finding our purpose. And that's where the success lies. Yeah, I I think not to, not to, to, to belabor on anything negative, because I always want to err on that you can do this. You can go for it. It's yes. there. But there are just some subtle warnings that need to just be said. That 
we don't realize, as you said, that we have moved a little further, a little here. And so we don't see it all at once. True. There's the deception of that, is that we at one time may have wanted to live around the things of God. But then whatever it may be, the cares of life, decisions that we've made, and then we find ourselves out, well, I, I used to could handle maybe a two-hour church service. I can't really handle a half an hour. Uh, I can't, you know, I don't, I'm not really into that song anymore. And you, go, you, you, you look back at yourself and you go, what, what, if you get a chance to, because so, sometimes people wind up in a situation where something terrible, tragic has to happen, and maybe COVID-19. Wake up, put the brakes on, mm -hmm. let's get back. This, this is actually, and it's, it's all perception. Could it be the grace of God just telling us slow down the train and take a new look at where you need to be and what's the most important? Because right. it's always our reaction and our response to what's going on, and I, I've seen. You, you know, you, with, with Harvey saying that the devil uses that strategy of distraction. There's no doubt. You know, it is, and you talked about this on Sunday, it's that slowly um, departing of God's presence. It is so subtle that uh, if you are not tapped in to the presence of God daily, that you don't even notice that it's lifting from you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've come to realize for me in my walk with the Lord that his presence in my life is very intimate. It's very personal. Mm -hmm. If you look at the last verse um, that I, I talked about in Exodus 33, verse 17, where the Lord says to Moses um, that I'm going to do what I've spoken about. I'm going to do it for mm -hmm. you. For you have found grace. And another word for grace is favor in my mm -hmm. sight. And then he says, I know you by name. Mm. You know, for me, that is so uh, intimate, yeah. that face-to-face -face relationship with the Lord, that intimate walk with yes. him, knowing his presence. But when you get caught up in the things that are going on around you, whether it be your work or your family or whatever it is, and you get so busy with other things, you don't always see that God's presence is slowly leaving in layers. It's not overnight. One day you sense his presence and the next day it's not there. It's that slow erosion of it. And that, I do believe, is a strategy of the devil. He just wants to get you away from your purpose in God. And he uses that distraction of lifting God's presence. It's not that he lifts it. We make the choice. We make choices daily. Right. And by making certain choices, that presence of God is lifting from our lives. No, it's so true. And it happens, like you said, so subtle, so uh, little by little that we don't really realize how do we get here. Right. And sometimes we don't even recognize that we've gotten there until whatever happens. And I truly believe that this is a, for lack of a better term, this is a wake-up call. Yeah. Right. Uh, hey, church, what's, what's more important? Because I truly believe when you have the one-on-one the -on -one relationship, the door that God has already opened for us, that all the other things are going to be added to you. And it's like, I can remember once, and I know we're coming to close here, I remember one time Tammy was off um, with the kids, and she had gone somewhere, and I was in the, in the house praying. And I could have, I could swear I heard her calling my name. And I'm like, she's not here, she's out of town. I heard my name Owen, and I, and, and I, I wrestled with that for a while, and, and, and I remember coming across the scripture where Samuel was being tutored by Eli, and he got up one day, and he heard his name, and he walked into the other room, and he said, have you called me? Now, cut to the chase, what's the, what's, the, what's the purpose? Sometimes God's voice may sound like someone else's voice, mm -hmm. and God was trying to get my attention. I remember that scripture coming to me, went back to my room, and God gave me a strategy that changed my situation real quickly. The point is, if I had not had that one-on intimacy, the need for that wisdom that I needed to change and, and make would have missed out on something huge mm -hmm. that, was, that would, have, would have affected a lot of people. How many times have we missed out mm -hmm. on a 
tidbit of God's wisdom because we have opted out for hearing someone else's wisdom. I'm not saying we're against counsel because we believe in counsel, but sometimes God wants to give us that direct wisdom that can ultimately change everything. So God's presence is personal. And, and, and ultimately, um, for those today who feel uh, afraid, in his presence, he promises us, and I, I want to read the scripture in Isaiah 53, 1. He says, do not be afraid. I will save you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Yeah. So God knows who you are. You know, even, Jesus even said he knows the number of the hairs on your head. Now, for some of us, that's easy for God. <laughs> uh, but for other, yeah. others of us, like you ladies. Uh, that's a, that's a big number. That's a big number. Yeah. You, y'all keep God in, in busy. You busy. keep God busy. Mm-hmm. But he, 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 he makes it so personal. And I think that that's what we're saying tonight. The, the, the opportunity to have a conversation with the almighty God who created the universe who is in charge today, who knows exactly what we have need of, the only thing we need to do is to call upon that name. Absolutely. So I just want to encourage you today that if you are in fear, if you're walking through this COVID-19 crisis with only you, then you are really, really, really going to be fearful. But the good news tonight that we've come to share with you is that you don't need to be alone. Call upon his name right now. Even after we get off and we're gone and you're you're at home, call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, I will save you. I will come to your rescue. As a matter of fact, what you said earlier, uh, Pastor Harvey, you said he will never leave us and he will never, never, ever forsake us. Never. So what a tremendous promise that yes. we have. We just need to hunger and thirst for his righteousness. You know what? We really enjoy being with you every, every, every day. And we hope that somehow you'll come and see us here at City Church when our doors are back open. Yes. And we enjoy Until being then, with you. join us online yeah. at citychurchnola.com, Facebook, YouTube, any, any area. From all of us at City Church TV, be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to City Church TV. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at City Church NOLA or visit our website at citychurchnola.com. Tune in to our services via live stream on Sundays at 10 a.m. And you can also join us for morning prayer on Wednesdays at 7 a.m. and family time on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Until next time, have a great week.